Hello to all of you who have taken the time to watch this presentation, which will be all about storytelling and reading stories to children. While it has been produced especially for Sunday school teachers, parents of younger children would certainly find it interesting and useful. Many Sunday school teachers in smaller congregations may comment that they have little or no resources at their disposal with which to teach the Sunday school children. There may be no access to the internet, to colourful storybooks or material with which to make interesting posters. But every teacher does have access to a Sunday school manual full of Bible stories and with that has two powerful resources for teaching at their disposal. Telling or reading Bible stories to the children is powerful because through them we can teach the children moral lessons that are important in their Christian life. Telling and reading of stories also have other advantages. It stimulates the imagination and children can visit places and meet people they have not known before. It also allows the teacher and the children to tell their own stories and in this way develops a bond between them. Jesus himself used stories called parables to teach the spiritual truths to adults. By using the power of stories, we can teach the same truths to the children and bring about a spiritual understanding of how the Lord wants us to behave. Now let's take some time to discuss how we can make storytelling interesting and effective. If you are going to tell a story, it is very important that you know the story well. Memorize its parts so that the storytelling is fluent. If you are going to pause, for long periods of time to think about what comes next. This can be a distraction to those listening to you. A good hint would be to practice by telling the story to yourself. Now remember that children live in the present so that they need to be carefully guided into the circumstances and the lives of the people in the time of the Bible. This will awaken their interest in the story so that they become attentive listeners. It is also important that we use a variety of different ways to lead into the story. Otherwise, our storytelling will become boring. The puzzle of Daniel and the lions. Try and get all the pieces in. One option is to start with a short introduction. Today, I would like to tell you a story from the Bible. It happened and was written down a long, long time ago. The story is about a man named Abram. Now, Abram was a great man of God. You could also start with a description of the time, surroundings and the situation. Close your eyes for a moment. Together, we are going to take a long, long journey. We travel to a foreign country. In this place, everything is different to what it is like where we live. It is very hot. Only a few plants grow in the dry soil. There are no trees that provide shade. And as far as the eye can see, there is nothing more than sandy, and stony hills. Another way to lead into the story would be to show the children a picture, perhaps from their workbook. They, for example, say who the people in the picture are, or the teacher can tell them who these people are. Then the story begins. For those teachers who have more resources at their disposal, they could use a bag with some items in, like an animal made of material, like the snake. This can then serve as a prompt for the story in which the animal appears. There are really many creative ways in introducing the story. The teacher could have an imaginary conversation on her cell phone in which she only reveals a part of the story. This makes the children curious and allows the teacher to then tell the full story. When you use different ways of introducing the story, the children are already more interested 
in what is going to come. Now once we have introduced the story, we have to tell the story in a way that makes it come alive. And we have a number of different techniques at our disposal to do just that. Let us explore some of these. One way in which to make the story come alive is to tell it from a different perspective. For example, you can tell the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 from the perspective of the boy whose fishes and loaves were used to create this miracle. How interesting it would be for the children to hear this story as if the boy was reporting on what he had experienced. It would also be very different to tell the story of how Jesus entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday as if the donkey was telling what happened. How interesting would that be? Then we could also start telling the story at an unusual point. Normally we start at the beginning and tell the story in sequence through to the end. Sometimes we could even start at the end or we could start in the middle and tell it from there. Besides telling the story from a different perspective, we also have at our disposal body language, voice and dialogue and involvement that can bring a story to life. Let's discuss each one of these in a bit more detail. The children would quite naturally be watching you as you tell the story, so it is easy to use your eyes and your facial expressions to hold the attention. For example, when someone in the story is happy, you can smile. When someone in the story is worried, you can frown. And when someone in the story is angry or sad, you can show these emotions on your face. And when David got there, he saw his brother's eyes were open like that. His brothers looked so scared. You can also and use your hands as a further expression of what is happening. You can, for example, wipe your tears from your eyes, place your hand on your chin when you are thinking, or place your hand on your mouth and widen your eyes when you are amazed. Oh my word! See what is he doing? He's building a big boat! Further actions can also be indicated by other gestures. The movement David made when swinging the sling, people bowing down to worship an idol, and rowing a boat. If that is what the character in the story is doing, then do it. Another wonderful tool for storytelling is the effective use of your voice. It is very important not to use a monotonous tone of voice and to speak clearly and loudly enough so that you can be understood. Remember to face the children when you are speaking to them. You can also vary your volume and the pace with which you speak. For example, the impression of some excitement can be created by speaking more loudly and speedily while quieting down to a whisper and speaking more slowly will create suspense and tension. This will help keep the children's attention focused. And it rained, and it rained, and it rained. If at a point you wish to recapture the children's attention because they are becoming restless, you can suddenly pause in the telling of the story and then continue with a phrase like, and then. The silence connected to the pause in the story makes the children curious about what is about to happen. Different tones of voice can be used to indicate different characters in the story and the tone of voice can show what the character is feeling. God said to Noah, Noah, this earth is too evil. An active way of telling a story is through the use of dialogue. This helps the children to see the interaction between the characters and to clearly know what each character is saying. Dialogue can be handled in two different ways. One, with the teacher telling the story as a narrator and the children acting out the story as the characters. Or two, where the teacher plays the part of both characters and adapts the voice and body language to help the children identify the characters. Lastly, 
please do involve the children in the story. This can be done in a number of different ways. Show me how strong you are. Goliath had real big muscles. Show me. Come on, show me your muscles in your arms. As we saw with the dialogue, the children can be asked to act out a part of the story. Please remember that when they are asked to do so, their acting does not have to be perfect. This is their way of expressing their understanding of what is happening. Other ways of involving the children can be by asking them to make appropriate sounds or appropriate actions at given points in the story. Now that we have looked at some effective techniques that can be used for good storytelling, we do for a moment have to mention some things that should not be done. Most of these points relate to the fact that we should not create the impression in the children's minds that something is in the Bible when in fact it is not there. This will certainly be confusing to them when they later in life start their own Bible study. So importantly, we should not elaborate on the story with statements that do not appear in the Bible. Give names to characters who have no names in the story. Make up your own version of the story. Let us then briefly move on to the reading of stories to the children. Generally, teachers have been told that they should not read the Bible story to the children, but rather tell it. Reading a Bible story to the children is, however, a wonderful alternative to telling one week after week. It is just as effective if properly done. One important hint in this regard is that you should prepare as thoroughly as if you were telling the story. Do not be caught in the trap of thinking, because I am reading the story, there is no need to prepare. Do read the story aloud, possibly a number of times, before reading it to the children. Remember too, that all the techniques of good storytelling can be used when reading. Use your voice expressively and be aware that facial expressions and gestures are still of great importance. Every day they boat on this ark. They were hitting the nails with a hammer and they used a saw to cut the wood. Having read through the story a number of times in preparation will help you to still make eye contact with the children while you are reading. This is important. When reading, you do have the freedom to make a comment at given points. The intent is not to stray from the story, but to give an indication that you are also living in it and not just reading it from the book. For example, when the three men are thrown into the fiery furnace, you could say, Oh no, I wonder what will happen now. Or, when the storm threatens to take the boat, the disciples are on, under. Wow, that is scary! You will also find that in the manual, or with most Bible storybooks, there are illustrations or pictures. At the appropriate time, show these to the children, so that they can get a visual impression of what you are reading about. It is an added bonus if you could continue reading while showing the picture. Lastly, but most importantly, remember that telling or reading a Bible story well is not the final objective of the lesson. It is wonderful to have brought it to life for the children and gives the teacher great satisfaction. But if the story does not have a spiritual lesson that can be applied in their later life of faith, it remains just that story. Because you know what, Daniel, Trusted God. You must always trust God. Don't let children tell you what to do. Do therefore allow enough time to answer the question, what can we learn from that story? Connect the situation the characters in the story found themselves in to the lives of the children. Allow them to express their own feelings and show them how the Lord is also present in their own lives. To conclude, each one of you are unique 
and will have your own characteristic style of storytelling or reading. Be yourself when you are busy with this part of teaching Sunday School. Look to improve your storytelling and reading abilities and take the opportunity to watch and listen to others who are good examples. Learn from them. Thank you for your time and attentive listening. Until the next time, happy storytelling and reading.